Hi, this message is for Christiane Wilker. My name is Annette, and I recently graduated from nursing school. I understand that life as a nurse is extremely stressful right now, and you're endangering yourself and your loved ones with every shift. I also understand that as a white person, it's difficult to comprehend the movement of the black community without having done extensive research or having a friend of color explain it to you. I appreciate your commitment to never treat anyone differently based on the color of their skin and your belief that God created us all to be equal. As nurses, we pledge ourselves to continuing education, a lifetime of learning. With that in mind, I would like to invite you into a judgment-free space to further discuss your video. The only assumptions I'm going to make are that you're coming from a place of sincerity and that in respectful discussion, we can help each other learn. I'm going to paraphrase what you've said, so please correct me if I misinterpreted anything. You bring up several valid and nuanced topics, so I'd like to discuss them in the order in which they're brought up. Firstly, you mentioned black privilege as something people of color believe they deserve because of the color of their skin. You bring up that people of color receive special scholarships and are under scrutinized because of the fear of being labeled a racist. You are brave for sharing this view because you know you risk being labeled this way. Thank you for your vulnerability. As a recent graduate, I would like to share my perspective on this. Some communities and populations in the United States do not have the same opportunities as affluent white, cisgendered, heterosexual, Protestant males. Those with money to donate scholarship funds understand that there are systemic biases where people are at a disadvantage. To help overcome these disadvantages, although they will likely never be eradicated, donors provide scholarships to promote equity in colleges and universities. I've also received scholarships simply because of socioeconomic status and would like you to know that scholarships are earned. The application process is often lengthy and competition is high. Even with scholarships, people of color may not have a level playing field in higher education due to a lower quality education in public school. This can largely be attributed to historical redlining in which people of color had entire districts zoned off and were denied loans, which reduced their ability to own homes, obtain lines of credit, and resulted in lower property taxes, which consequently lowered the budgets for education. Because I wanna get through everything you discussed, I'm gonna leave this here for now for you to do more research and move on. When you talk about the way people are behaving and that it deserves scrutiny, I agree. Why are peaceful protests happening? Why are people at these protests being attacked by police and the military? Where is the anger and the violence coming from? You stated that things being said are unreal. And I really felt that. It's confusing as a white person to feel like this is sudden. You may feel that police are under a threat and by extension, firefighters and nurses are under threat. I am in no way qualified to speak for people of color, so I encourage you to seek out black scholars and voices and listen to people on social media on how systemic injustices and the racist sentiments have never left our country. How the 13th Amendment did not abolish slavery but legalized it in prison systems. How the police were originally formed to catch escaped slaves. How the civil rights movement led to an increase in racial violence in Confederate monuments how the school to prison pipeline breeds slave labor for corporations. They can explain much better than I can how this affects their current lives. When you say that people of color go out and say, oh, I'm black, I'm feeling it today. Yes, there are certain days where people of color must feel more targeted than other days. Perhaps they're followed in the mall or the grocery store. Perhaps people cross the street to avoid them. Perhaps they are let go of their jobs or sent home from school because of the way they dress or do their hair. Perhaps they aren't heard regarding their pain and their ailments by medical professional who swore an oath to take care of them. The next thing you said is, I don't understand. And you can't. I can't. We can't possibly understand what it's like to be black in America, but that's okay, Christy. Now's the time to learn. Now is the perfect time to listen to the lived black experience. Now is the time to absorb film and music and books. Now is the perfect time to say, I don't understand. 
I'm on this journey with you. I'm making mistakes right now, right now, and learning from them. Every day we can try harder to understand how systemic racism, not individual racism, benefits us as white people. Are you still with me, Christy? In this space to talk about your video, I want to thank you for staying with me this long, if you're still here. This next part is very important. You said that George Floyd was resisting arrest, had meth and fentanyl in his system, and was positive for COVID-19. As nurses, we are taught to use evidence-based practice. We consider the entire picture of our patient when making nursing diagnoses and implementing care. You are absolutely correct that he had these drugs present in his system, that he was positive for COVID-19. In addition, he had an underlying heart condition. However, at this time, we have seen the autopsy results that his cause of death was asphyxiation as a result from the neck compression from the officer's knee. The three officers involved have now had various charges, including second degree murder for one of them. So we know how George Floyd died and that it was not a myocardial infarction. I wanna pause here though. You're a good nurse. You don't treat any patient differently based on their race. If your patient, sober or not, underlying heart condition or not, COVID or not, told you they couldn't breathe, you would quickly assess the cause and intervene, wouldn't you? You would sit the patient up, apply oxygen, check the pulse oximeter, auscultate their lungs, get orders for bronchodilators or whatever medication you felt you needed to keep this patient alive, wouldn't you? And if you saw that a person was cutting off the air supply of your patient, you would get that person away from your patient and possibly call security to have them removed, wouldn't you? Of course you would, because you're a good nurse. You're a good person. You do not make this obvious of a mistake in your practice, and if you ever did, if you ever accidentally hurt a patient, I'm sure you would be devastated and would want a full root cause analysis so that no further sentinel events like this happened. I think this is why people are upset. People are upset that it is not within a police officer's scope of practice to murder a suspect of forgery. The police are supposed to protect citizens and ensure that those who violate the rule of law have their day in court. But sometimes police don't do this. They sometimes kill unarmed civilians and they sometimes are protected from the consequences of their actions. And if this happens enough times, over a long enough time span, across an entire nation, and disproportionately affects people of color, I can see why they'd be so upset. I can see why people of color fear for their lives every day. I can see why they would want police reform and resources redistributed. I can see why anyone who watched George Floyd die on camera would be completely enraged at how broken our justice system is. The last thing I saw on your video was that black people killed a white teen in Central Park and nobody cared. I'm not sure which recent event to which you're referring. If you're talking about Tessa Majors, she was not killed in Central Park and her murderer who is 14 years old has pled guilty and will be serving time. If you're talking about the rape and murder that happened in 1989, I'd like to educate you that five underage black boys were wrongfully convicted in that case, which would again be a reason to question our police, our courts, and our legislators. You're right, though. Your reality is completely subjective. So, I invite you to gather as many facts as you can before scrutinizing any one person's actions or any community's actions. With the evidence that we currently have, it's clear to me that we should be scrutinizing every behavior and every system that leads to inequality. We should be scrutinizing ourselves and our own beliefs to find out why we are angry or hurt. Why are we so fragile that we can't allow people to fight for their lives? How are we benefiting from white supremacy, even when we don't actively seek to harm people of color? Thank you so much for your bravery to say, I don't understand.